Wildfires raging up and down California. 31 people killed, thousands of homes destroyed, and more than a quarter million people under evacuation. Crews stepping up their staffing here in San Diego due to the heightened fire risk. STG&E also cutting off power to thousands of homes. And remembering the mind behind the Marvel Universe, Stan Lee, the creator of superheroes becoming one himself. Good evening, I'm Kimberly Hunt. And I'm Steve Atkinson. Let's get right to the very latest numbers on those major fires burning all across the state. This new brush fire erupted off the 118 freeway in Simi Valley today. Look at this. At one point, helicopters were doing airdrops right next to cars. It burned almost 200 acres before crews got a handle on it. Just southeast of there, the Woolsey fire is now 20% contained. That's burned 91,000 acres, killed two people. Hundreds of buildings have been destroyed and thousands more remain threatened. Some evacuations have been lifted, but roughly 200,000 people are still out of their homes. And in Northern California, the campfire is now the deadliest wildfire in modern California history. It's killed 29 people in Butte County. Hundreds more are unaccounted for. The fire is also the most destructive in state history, destroying more than 6,000 homes. It's grown to 113,000 acres and is just 25% contained. Here in San Diego, this small fire broke out in Ramona today. It spread from a house fire. Crews put it out quickly, but it comes as our county is on high alert due to dry and windy conditions. 10 News reporter Lauren Davis is live in Alpine, just one area where SDG&E has cut power to the homes. Lauren? 13,000 homes to be exact. Look how dry it is. The leaves just crumble here in Alpine. We couldn't go live from Descanso because they don't have any power or cell phone service, which a lot of people there are very concerned with because they're afraid if a fire does start, they're not going to be alerted. Take a look at this video we shot earlier. Our camera is getting pounded by tumbleweeds along the 8. It's in Descanso. You can see the tumbleweed hitting the camera. The dust is blowing so hard that you can taste it. That's why SDG&E shut down power to homes in the area leaving homeowners fending for themselves. I talked to one person who went through this last year for the first time when SDG&E turned off the power. He now has a large generator to supply power to the whole house. We have to keep the fridge going. Uh, when we don't have power, we don't have water. That's the main thing because we're on a well and the well has an electric pump, so no power, no, uh, no pump, no water. So it can be real convenient. I don't really have a choice, I understand. Uh, we don't like it, but it's okay. I mean, it's for safety, it's for fire prevention, and uh, I'd, rather, I'd rather be safe than sorry. Everyone on high alert here. SDG&E is supplying electricity to resource centers where people can go and plug in their phones and get some heat. Now, here's a look inside Camp Oliver where they're providing that heat and the water. They also have the latest information on power outages. Now, they do expect the wind to die down tomorrow, but they're expecting to keep those pow that power out until Wednesday just to be on the safe side. Live in Alpine, Lauren Davis, 10 News. Lauren, thank you. Angelica Campos has been tracking these dangerous conditions since last week, so what are we looking like for the rest of the week, Angelica? Well, it was very windy this morning. Right now, the winds are still pretty strong, not as strong as this morning, but they will be picking up into tonight and early tomorrow. That is why it's still a critical danger out there. A red flag warning until 5 p.m. on Wednesday, most likely the power will stay off until then. Of course, we have to wait and see what the winds will be doing. They're averaging 35 miles an hour in Alpine, about 19 in Mount Laguna, and 22 in Campo. And Again, I'm expecting those winds to get stronger. So potentially by 10 o'clock, we could see winds over 40 miles an hour in areas like Ramona, Alpine, Descanso, and also in Hamul. And those winds will be speeding up into tomorrow morning. This morning, the strongest winds happen between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. And most likely we'll see a repeat as we head into tomorrow. We're tracking also a high wind warning. I'll pinpoint how long it's going to last. Thanks, Angelica. A Scripps Ranch homeowner who's very familiar with wildfires is now launching a low-tech plan aimed at saving homes and lives. As 10 News reporter Michael Chen found out, that homeowner says a twist on the volunteer fire department could make a big difference. The images from the Woolsey and Camp wildfires. Scary for them 
and should be cautionary for us. Tough for Richard Ryder to watch. The image is all too familiar. I looked out there on that hill over there, and there was literally a wall of flame. In 2003, the flames of the devastating Cedar Fire swept into Scripps Ranch, forcing Ryder to evacuate, destroying more than 300 homes in the area. Most of the houses that burned down in Scripps Ranch actually burned down because there was no one there to put out ember fires. Ryder, a well-known taxpayer advocate, now advocating for fire protection. We need a volunteer supplementary fire brigade. Ryder says a volunteer fire brigade similar to police reserves would not be attached to a fire station. Instead, they would assemble and be deployed when needed to put out ember fires. Ryder says the equipment for a volunteer brigade would not have to be sophisticated. We're talking about shovels, hoses, and even wet blankets. Ryder says that extra manpower would not be on the front lines. A supplemental force that handles houses one block, two blocks, a mile away from where the actual fire is occurring. Ryder points to the Cedar Fire as an example. One of his friends stayed behind and put out ember fires. He went up and down the neighborhood and he figures he saved seven houses. Ryder says imagine the good a large group of volunteers could do with a bit of training. In Scripps Ranch, we lost 330 houses. I figured that 250 could have been saved. One fire expert told us safety could be a concern with a volunteer crew. Ryder says fire officials could lead the group and deploy them safely as another weapon. In the firefight, Michael Chen, 10 News. Ryder plans to submit this idea in writing to the Board of Supervisors this week. We'll keep you posted on his progress. And for the latest information on all of the fires and a real-time forecast, just download the 10 News app. It's free in the App Store.